The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. I'm hunting the elusive Xbox One video game console. It's really hard to get a hold of, but I'm going to use my Nerf gun to stun it, and then I can take it apart and do a teardown. Where are you? Clever girl. Ha ha ha, got it. Remember kids, always practice gun safety. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. Here is the Xbox One video game console. I've seen photos of it apart online, but I won't believe it until I see it myself. So join me on this fun journey as I figure out how to take this thing apart. I didn't look up any guides, I'm just gonna try to figure it out. So we'll see how it works. Yeah, it's very large. I'm sure a lot of it is empty air. Because as we all know, the Xbox 360 kind of was infamous for its uh, cooling issues which was a result of not enough airflow. And also, you know, the console was made a little aggressively small. It looked really cool. I mean, I think the Xbox 360 is like the coolest looking console ever made. But by making it small, it reduced the airflow. So that's part of the problem it had. Okay, so we have fake, <laughs> uh, yeah. Sometimes you find screws under these, sometimes you don't. Just because there wasn't one under that one doesn't mean these won't, these won't, won't have screws. Okay, that one doesn't have a screw. I'm just gonna, well, no, I'm gonna check them all. I could have checked it all. There's no obvious screws on this, so I'm just gonna assume I need to splooge the ends of it, so to speak. So I don't have like an official uh, splooge tool like from Amazon, but uh, I have this old vinyl scraper, which should work. Oh, I hear something. Yeah, there's something there, all right. I think this is definitely the right side to start on. I'm in one of the most inhospitable places on earth, Ben's shop. All I've got is a pinball machine and a water bottle. See, normally once I know what's in the console, I'll rip it apart without much care. But in this case, I wanna be careful. Oh, hello. Okay. Okay, so that's similar to the Xbox 360 where you, you start to take it apart by removing the end caps. So there should just, yeah, there's just snaps in here. Come on. All right, well that means I need to remove this cap here. Ooh, crunchy. Oh, oh, we broke something off, yay! Come on, everyone knows that I don't care about the case to this because they know what I'm gonna do with this thing. So yeah, let's not kid ourselves. I don't actually use this big screwdriver for driving screws. I just use it for prying things apart. <laughs> and it's good at it. Okay, so there's an Xbox security sticker here. So that definitely tells us we need to go through it. Uh oh, I've warded the warranty. Cause that's what I do. Now, if this is similar to the Xbox 360, that means um, one side of this metal case, the <laughs> RF shielding, is gonna be connected to the plastic and the other side of the plastic will be loose. So we don't wanna force it too much. Uh, so yeah, I'm not gonna be too aggressive quite yet. Oh no, the security sticker. There's a big latch right there. It's interesting to see the um, styling of consoles change over the years. You know, like in the 90s, everything was like white and uh, kind of more neutral colors. And now consoles are kind of turning back like the 80s, like big hunks of black plastic with huge vents everywhere, like the Sega Genesis or the ColecoVision. Not that the ColecoVision really needed any cooling. It has a Z80 in it. I think I'm making some progress now. Ah, 
How is that connected? I gotta figure this out. Oh, did it snap back together? Man, it's like, no, don't take me apart. Oh, I guess you just do that, all right. Wow, look at that fan. They are not taking any chances. Okay, so before we take this apart, we wanna carefully remove this ribbon cable here. Okay, so I'm gonna lift up this thing that kind of locks it in place. There we go. All right, so that's gonna have your, what all is that? Okay, so that ribbon cable is your uh, sync button for the controller. And then it's also your uh, eject button. Okay, so I'm just gonna, again, I'm not sure I could forget this, but that's the system speaker. Okay, so this, this PCB is very much like the Ring of Light PCB that was on the Xbox 360. Although it looks like they're using it to pass through the wireless. Okay, come on, there we go. I kind of like the Ring of Light on the Xbox 360, but Think about it, the ring of light has a negative connotation to it because the ring of light, of course, is what would have the three red lights of death. These really long screws are what are connecting this metal chassis to the plastic case. Now it's time for a tech timeout. Hey, remember that single-handed guitar that we built? Well, we shipped it to Ian, the musician who asked for it originally, and here's a video of him playing it. I'm going to do a couple of songs here using your wonderful invention with this uh, nice guitar that you sent. Once again, thanks very much for everything that you've done for me. It was a cloudy day when we met But then the sun shone down to the clouds that was awesome. It's really satisfying to see people using things we build on this show to improve their lives. Connecting your power supply to highly volatile chemical compounds. Technically, not easy. Connecting to more product resources with faster search and fewer clicks. Now that's easier. Discover how we're making doing business easier and creating all new website features. It's kind of interesting when you take apart some things like this that, um, well, not this unit, but a lot of things, the security screws will all be on the outside because they don't want you messing with it. But once you actually take it apart, Inside it'll all be, uh, you know, Phillips and standard stuff. Looks like this guy is attached through the, there's probably a hole here. Let me see if I can pry this guy up. This is... Yep. And that's kind of, that's not actually on a circuit board. That's interesting. Okay, I'm going to assume this is um, both the um, wireless, you know, Wi-Fi module and for the controllers. Okay, so, not sure what these are, but I'm just gonna remove them anyway. Okay, so this is, it's obviously where the GPU is gonna be, I'm sorry, it's obviously where the APU is gonna be, the accelerated processing unit. I like this girl, that looks really cool. I think they should just add that exposed. I think it looks it looks cooler than, you know, that. Wow, look at those big metal spacers. Those even, oh yeah. They definitely wanted to make sure this thing was well grounded. Oh, looks like this just comes off. Oh, that's neat. Oh, I see, they just painted this so you don't see the silver through that. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Look at that, that is, that is so crazy. They, to put the wireless on top, they actually built this whole separate adapter with its own cable. I like how small this is. 
The Xbox 360 had a full size five and a quarter optical drive in it, but they have made it a lot smaller. So yeah, and it's also uh, slot loading, not tray loading. Yeah, I just got a regular, oh man, that, come on, you know you wanna come out. You wanna come out and play. Ugh. That's almost identical. This is basically the power to the optical drive. If it's anything like the 360, it's gonna have like 12 volts, five volts, 3.3 volts, eject and disc status will be the pin out of that. I'm gonna guess this just lifts out, yep. Look how small that is, oh, beauty. All right, I'm just gonna remove a few more things from this, so. Okay, is that a clip on that? Why is that guy not wanting to come out? Yeah. Okay, so we just use standard SATA cables, that's nice. I'm sure these are SATA 3.0. Eh, actually, Samson Drive, that's good. That's a good brand. Not Hitachi or Dusk. <laughs> Dusk Star, also called Death Star Drives. Now yeah, I'll put that aside for now. Okay, so clearly right off the bat, they've loaded this thing up with a great cooling system. They have very large heat pipes going through this and a quite big fan. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so this just clips on. So there's like the fan clips into place. So I guess they made sure the clips were really tight. There we go. Wow. Oh my gosh, look at that. Okay, what heat pipes do is they basically superconduct heat, so to speak. They've got um, chemicals inside of them, so they'll pull the heat away from the processor very quickly and evenly distribute it. The copper heat pipes conduct heat much better than these steel plates. And this is, yeah, that's gonna be steel, not aluminum. So again, just like the Xbox 360, the final step is to remove these screws from the APU, I keep wanting to say G a CPU or a GPU, but now it's an APU. Oh, let's face it, I'm never gonna put this thing back together. You all know what's gonna happen to it. You know what they found down there. Stuff. So I think this would be fairly conducive to making into a portable. If you think about it, you can make it pretty thin. The drive is a lot smaller than the previous Xbox model. Um, I think the main challenge you'd run across making this into a portable would be the uh, screen. This is one of the smallest LCDs you can really even get, at least in a complete form. And this guy is only VGA. So, you know, it's cheap, it's decent, but it's only VGA, so it wouldn't work with this because the Xbox One only has HDMI. Starbuck jumped the ship. Doesn't matter. Look at that, solid copper, and then it has copper heat pipes going through it. Again, they wanted to make sure this thing worked. Oh, that's a lot of paste. All right, so the power comes in here and goes through all these caps, and we have more caps and power regulation down here for the APU itself. There's 16 of these 512 megabyte RAM chips, DDR3. Um, okay, here's, this is kind of like an, a custom chip. It's probably also the North Bridge. That means it connects all the USB and peripherals to the main controller. And also I noticed that the um, HDMI in goes right to it, you know, for the television functionality. I really like this here. There's um, depopulated tack switch mounts, surface mount, and there's a power switch, eject switch header, so it'd be really easy to hook up those switches. Oh, okay, look, there is an ARM processor after all inside the Xbox One. People were speculating that they might not go x86, so there you go, there's an ARM in there. Pretty much like the Xbox Slim that came out a couple years ago, um, quite a nice design. It's actually, the board is actually pretty large, so, the size of the console is somewhat justified, so we'll have to see what I can build out of this in the future. Spoiler warning, probably some kind of portable. 
Well, I finally got that teardown out of my system. It's always fun to play with new hardware. In our next episode, I'm going to be making mods for the Xbox One controller. Now, I've done many controller mods over the years, both for video game companies to test the latency of their upcoming games, and also for people with disabilities to be able to play again. And that's what I'll be doing, a single-handed accessibility controller for the Xbox One. We'll see you then. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com.